Thank you, Richard. But I can't help but uh, relate to some of the things that Rachel was talking about. So thank you for sharing that with us, Rachel. I too took a career break of about five years. And the one thing I never have, um, and you'd have to meet my father to understand this, is misunderstood my skill set or confidence levels. But regardless of that, um, when I tried to get back into the city, having had a five year break, um, other people underestimated my skill set because they assumed I'd been doing nothing. I I'd actually been doing angel investment. I'd actually been closing down a two and a half billion dollar hedge fund, which was my husband's hedge fund at the time, which was one of the reasons I'd taken a career break to do that on his behalf because he had burnout. But it was very, very difficult because when I was moving back into the fund management side, I'd previously been the global head of desk. And therefore I was going into lower positions, thinking I've been out of the markets for a little bit, um, but I couldn't get a job. And the reason I couldn't get a job is because I was probably too good for those lower jobs, but I wasn't accepted into the top jobs. But therein lies another opportunity because that's what resulted in me launching Women on Boards. And uh, Richard, thank you very much for your introduction. Um, I must update our numbers on the website because we've actually helped about three and a half thousand people into the boardroom, um, uh, 10 percent of which have been men. Because I absolutely believe the point that Rachel meant about being on boards, external boards, really can develop you as a leader and you as an individual. So certainly if you take a career break, it's a great thing to do. But I think it's also a great thing to do alongside your day job, particularly interestingly, if you're in the legal profession, uh, because you've mentioned about being sole traders, we've got billable hours, you've got clients, but it can be quite a flat structure. And actually getting up into the leadership and really understanding how difficult it is to lead people or understand risk, HR, operations um, uh, and, and all the things that you do as a leader over and above dealing with your clients. So the sort of billable hour side of the legal profession and there are other aspects to it as well. But it's the same in other professional services. It's really, really good. And if you go engage with your community at a leadership level, it's a bit like taking a mini MBA assuming you choose the right board. And therein lies one of the other questions, because when you're in the boardroom, people worry about not knowing enough about governance on universities or NHS or um, sports boards, all of the public appointments boards. It's not difficult. Most people learn on the job. Boards actually only do two things, performance, strategy and stargazing and oversight with regard to what the executive team are doing and conformance, which is filing your accounts and abiding by the law. Um, and that's one of the things we as an organization do is plant seeds. And I hope I'm planting seeds today. There's a bull position out there for everyone. You're never too male, you're never too old, you're never too young to be in the boardroom because the boardroom matters. But of course, when you get into the boardroom and there's a lot of pressure on boards and also professional services firms to get diverse leadership teams, Diversity is absolutely brilliant, but only if you can manage it. Are you able to consciously include people? Are you able to, to, to like take collective collegiate decisions? And it can be very, very difficult. And that brings me on to leadership and leadership matters. You know, um, interesting your survey, Richard, talking about um, more organization, thinking what's the purpose of our organization? thinking how do we lead people in different environments and the leadership um, because we work with so many corporates men as well as women uh, in our organization talking about meeting matters influence matters the boardroom matters and have you thought about how you actively manage your career um, a lot of companies are struggling with leadership um, and how to be consciously inclusive um, and I think it's really, really important how consciously inclusive you are if you're leading virtual teams. Um, and I think the professional service, I would say uh, law firms are slightly behind the accountancy firms, find it really, really difficult not to see individuals and work with individuals who've got different priorities in life. Um, and I think the investment that's required in making people consciously inclusive, and I'm not talking about unconscious bias training, you know, give us all a break. If I hear people say, uh, I'm not biased, I know they are biased because we are all biased. It is within our DNA 
to do that. And therefore, even I have to stop myself and consciously think in a room or in a meeting, how do I make sure that person's spoken? Have a radar on what's going on in the room and it's difficult. Now, one of the things that my organization does is um, research as well. So we've just launched a report called The Hidden Truth where we've looked at what's been happening on the diversity of boards outside the top 350. There's a huge spotlight on the 100. Lord Davis started that 10 years ago. Then we've had Tanton Alexander, they've extended to the 350, and it's now called the FTSE Women Leaders. And they've moved their focus from the boards because whip dee dee, we've met the target of 33% and the net target is now 40 that's actually not difficult, it's not many companies. But outside, and if you just look at the 600 companies in the FTSE all share, 44% are not meeting the target. Um, if you look at their executive leadership teams below, um, it's really, really interesting. Uh, it's in terms of what I would describe as real companies, the executive teams are less than 20%. If you have, I make one more point, if you have a female chief executive, the leadership team is 55% women, 45% men. If you have a male CEO in that group outside the FTSE 350, it's the female leadership is only 14%. Now, are women promoting like themselves or are they having a different view of what a leader could look like? But that number is extraordinarily different. Is it statistically significant? For those statisticians out there, no, because there aren't that many chief, female chief execs. However, it's every single board. So leadership matters. Um, and I'm here to support and help anybody get into the boardroom if they're interested, because it matters. Um, and it's not for everyone. I just want you to be conscious that I'm not doing it for a reason and know about it. So thank you again, Richard, for bringing me here today. Thank you.